Welcome, 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 my loves. We're going to be continuing on with our Getting Started with Closure Script series. And in this video, we're going to be showing you how to use NPM modules. Now, as always, start off by liking the video, subscribing to the channel. I really do want to promote the content. As always, timestamps are going to be in the description below. So check those out. Skip to the sections that are more important to you. So in this video, I want to do one thing, and that's just going to be showing you how to use NPM modules inside of Closure Script. And for those of you who don't know, NPM packages are things like open source libraries and frameworks that we can use, for example, React, Axios, Lodash. I mean, those are just a few, but NPM is one of the largest code repositories in the world. So there's a lot of things that you can use. And it makes sense why you would want to use NPM packages inside of ClojureScript, just like you would want to use them if you were writing JavaScript. And for those of you who haven't been following along, we've been setting up a Hello World app using ClojureScript. It's a very minimal app. We're going step by step. And in the previous video, which is linked above, we showed you how to set up FigWheel main. Now we're going to show you how to use NPM modules with that exact same project. Now, for those of you who are wondering, oh, can I use NPM modules with FigWheel main or ClojureScript, or is it just one or the other? Don't worry, you can use NPM module whether you're using FigWheel main or whether you're using Shadow CLJS, or if you're using vanilla ClojureScript. There's been a lot of work done on making NPM modules more and more accessible to the ClojureScript community. But let's get down to brass tacks and actually look at what we're going to be doing. What do you need to do to make NPM modules work in your ClojureScript application? The first thing you need is a bundler. And for example, that would be something like Webpack or Parcel. Now we're going to be using Webpack in this particular tutorial. It is one of the most popular. There's no other specific reason you could use technically whatever you wanted. The second thing you need are node packages to actually use in your application. And the final thing that you have to do is you have to tell ClojureScript how to output its compiled JS. In this case, we're going to tell ClojureScript to output a JS bundle that Webpack will know how to consume. All right, so let's get to the code. What I want to do is a high level overview of the steps that we're going to be taking or the step that we're going to tell Clojure script to take when it's compiling our code. So you get a little bit more of an idea of what's going on. So we start off by just coding Clojure. Our Clojure is compiled into JavaScript. Then it will be run by the browser. That's the normal flow of things. What we want to do right now is we want to turn our Clojure script into Webpack compatible JS. And that's just the exact same uh, closure script file, but it includes your node modules in it. And then that Webpack compatible JS is actually going to be passed to Webpack, and then Webpack is going to output a JS bundle. So the key difference is where we would use the JS bundle in the regular flow of things, what we want to do now is use the JS bundle that's produced by Webpack. All right, let's jump to the actual code. So what we're looking at right here is the Hello World application that we've been working on. And you're going to notice that we don't have the out directory, we don't have our target directory. I removed all those things just because I wanted to make it a little bit cleaner so that we can just focus on the actual code. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into our depths.eden file and check out the FigWheel main configuration. In the previous video, we were using a much lower version than what I'm using right now. So what I want you to do is bump up to 0.2.9. That's the current latest version of FigWheel. And the reason why we're doing this is let's just use latest code so that as we're going along this whole series, it doesn't feel like it's super dated. The next step is we want to be in our terminal. And what we need to do is we need to create a package.json file. So the flow that we're going to be going through these first two steps, which is get our package.json file, install Webpack, and then we're going to install an NPM package. These are all the exact same things that you would do in JavaScript. There is literally nothing ClojureScript specific about these steps. So the first thing we want to do is we want to just quickly, quickly create a package.json file. And to do that, npm init dash y. If you're curious, you can use yarn. Nothing wrong with that. I use that on some of my own projects as well. And that will generate this package.json file that we see right here. We don't really care too much about the contents of this. So let's close that up. The next thing we want to do is we want to install Webpack and Webpack CLI. These are development tools. We don't use these in production. So what that means is we want to do npm add save dev and then we'll do Webpack Webpack dash CLI. And you know what? I got comments in the past that maybe this is not big enough. So hopefully this will be a little bit bigger and I'll do this thing with this as well. All right, we'll try that. So hit enter on that. And that will take a moment. And when it's done, you're going to see that you have a node modules 
directory inside of your hello world application that is expected and if you go inside your package.json you're going to see that you should have a dev dependencies here and it'll have webpack and webpack-cli don't worry about the version numbers so much those are going to change depending on when you run this command so now we're going to actually install our first npm package and i think react is usually the main one that people go to use people know exactly what it is and they want to know exactly how to use that but the thing is there's a lot of examples of how to use that in the closure script ecosystem there's even a fish uh, tutorials that show how to use that. So instead of that, I want to show you how to use a different package so you can see that it's not like smoke and mirrors, that you can use whatever you want. So in this case, we're going to use Axios, which if you don't know what this is, this is a promise-based HTTP client written in JavaScript. It's very popular. So we'll install this, uh, clear that up. So now we have Webpack, we have Axios. The last thing we need to do is tell ClojureScript to output a bundle that is going to be consumable by Webpack. So the next thing that we're actually going to want to do is we want to open up our dev.cljs.eden file. And what this file is used for is, as we said before, configuring FigWheel and our ClojureScript compiler. Now, what we want to do is set up our project so that we can actually use NPM modules without having to do any custom configurations. So what we do is we're going to add another key here. And it looks like this. It's auto bundle. And then we tell it Webpack. Now, this particular deal right here is specific to FigWheel. It's different if you want to actually do something with ClojureScript and even ShadowCLJS has its own way of handling things. The next step is we're going to open up our app.cljs file. So as we said before, the things we have now are we have access to our NPM packages. We've actually configured our ClojureScript project to use our NPM packages. Now we have to require in our NPM package which is Axios, spelled like this, exactly the same way as we would import any other ClojureScript library. And that's kind of the really cool thing about this. The last thing you need to do is go into your resources public index.html file, and you want to make it look like this. So what we're doing here is we're saying import main underscore bundle. This is what's going to be output by Webpack. So whatever you had before, change it to look like this. And we'll close this up. With that, we have everything that we need to actually run the project. So we'll start by doing this clj a dev and we'll start the project. All right, so we have our app running on the left hand side here, and now we actually have to use Axios. So, as I said, Axios is an HTTP client and it's promise based. So, I'm just going to go in here and paste down this code so you don't have to watch me type it out. And you're going to see, I'll make this a little bit bigger. What this is doing right now is these double dots here is closure script interrupt. So it's saying go inside of the Axios package and let me use the get method. In this case, you're going to notice that I'm using this little endpoint right here. This is just a mock uh, rest server that someone has graciously set up for us so we can fetch real data so that it's not like faked or anything like that. And because this is a promise, we're going to chain the dot then method. And all we're going to do is pass it this anonymous function and inside we're just going to console log, whatever we get back from our to do's endpoint over here. All right, let's see if that works. So all I should have to do now is save this and we should see this console logged over here. So we see that it gets console logged here. And if we start inspecting the data, the data is the literal thing that we were getting from this little mock endpoint right here. And it gave it back some, is the to-do completed? No, it's not. The ID of the to-do, which as you can see is right here. And maybe we could change that and see if we get something different in response, just to see that it's not faked. And we do, we get a different ID and it has a different title associated to it. And that's pretty much it. That's how you can use an NPM package in ClojureScript. All right, congratulations. You're now using NPM modules. This is like step one. The next step is start exploring. Start trying to use all kinds of NPM packages inside of your ClojureScript project and see how it works out. But I do want to leave you also with a few quick tips because they were gotchas for me anyways when I was trying to get some things going. Some packages in NPM are a little more interesting than others. Number one is when you're requiring an NPM package, you're going to use CommonJS requires. Uh, what this means is you can't use ES6 syntax. So if you're looking at an NPM package and it only shows you uh, ES6 module syntax, you can still use that, but you just have to require it sometimes in a different way. 
You may get warnings in the browser console about things like no source maps found. If you want to resolve that issue, you resolve that in your Webpack configuration file. Uh, I don't actually see any that are being thrown right now, so it seems like maybe Bruce Hellman, the author of Figwheel Main, has actually put that in his Webpack configuration. If not, it's super easy to write your own Webpack configuration file. I'll have some links in the description below so you can see how it go about doing that. And I just want to make a note about Auto Bundle. I did talk about it a little bit earlier, but Auto Bundle is a convenience that's been provided by Figwheel. So that's not actually what ClojureScript is doing, that's what Figwheel as a library is doing. Now this is awesome because it gets you going really quickly, but if you ever find that you're limited by that, don't worry because you can write a custom Webpack config file and it's pretty painless overall. I mean, it's no more painful than writing it in JavaScript. I want to also take a moment to highlight the amazing work that people like David Nolan, Mike Fikes, and the entire crew behind the ClojureScript language and and then how hard they're working at making things like NPM modules accessible to the ClojureScript ecosystem. They really do believe in this language. And I mean, I do too, obviously. I'm doing videos on these things. So if like me, you're someone who is thankful that you can use Clojure or ClojureScript in production, or you can use it as a hobby project, or that the language exists at all, and you really do want to just show your appreciation, I'm gonna put some links in the description below. And those are links to the maintainers of ClojureScript, their GitHub sponsors pages. So that will be people like I mentioned before, uh, David Nolan and Mike Fikes. Maybe send some love their way. I know they would appreciate it. They've been doing this for such a long time and it really has been out of the goodness of their hearts. And also feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel. I really do want to get the content out there. I'd like to promote the language and do what I can to give back in my own way. So thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.